that we are saying that it, once there is no clear demarcation between you and the world, then forget it. Your Christian life is not known in the courtyard of heaven. In dressing, there must be a change. In 1 John chapter 2, verse 15, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away when the lust thereof. Those who are doing it, they will move with the ocean of the world. When, the world, when that ocean is sweeping them right into the pit of hell. But those who do the will of God, he did that do it the will of God abided forever. So we see clearly that we must shun the world in dressing, in appearance, in eating, in mannerism, in their competitions. You know, some people, they will even go to the extent of uh, taking the animal's uh, skin and what they call attachment. They say that is what will make them beautiful. And they will be putting those attachment on their hair. What they have, they, they, the people uh, have succeeded in removing from animals. You are not satisfied with your own natural, natural makeup. You now want to have the additions of animals. What a shame. Others will go to the extent of uh, just uh, uh, their dresses. You can see very clearly. And uh, they are bought in contours. And then, what a shame. Of, of things that are not befitting a redeemed child of God. A child of the kingdom who is waiting patiently for the second coming of the Lord. Others will go to the extent of, uh, of uh, getting themselves involved in the games of the world. That, well, I just have to, and then you see them roaming about in the field, playing an inflated balloon, and shouting that, oh, somebody has won. Because this person has won, I am not going to eat, uh, and, uh, this is not of my own time, I am not eating today, and appear sad. What a shame. For a redeemed child of God who claims to be a believer. Others, you will see them, they, they call themselves brothers, but you see the kind of trousers they are wearing, the jeans of the world, the dirty jeans of the world, all those things that mafias and criminals of the blackest dye are wearing in the world. All those importations are now coming. And now you see this individual with all the jeans, with all the, the dirty, all those things of the world, and he's wearing them. He doesn't have any sense of decorum. And he says, well, it doesn't matter after all. It is just, what makes you different from you you and the criminal? And all those other maruders and all those disco dancers. What a shame. If you are a Christian, you remain a Christian. If you are not a Christian, out of the way. So that you stand clearly where you belong. Because there will be no hunky party on that day. It will, the day will show clearly. You either belong to the right or to the left. And that is the, the margin, the division line. There is no missing of, okay, let's mix up. And those who are at the right, they are at the right, they must be perfect. They must be holy. That is the condition. Without holiness, forget it, no man, no woman shall see the Lord. We we'll come to point two. The antidote of laudable, the antidotes, that is, of laudable holiness. What kicks against holiness? Holiness can be negated by many antidotes when a believer is careless enough to abandon the painstaking building. Fall. So prayerlessness, because that is where we derive grace. That is where we derive spiritual energy. That is where we are able to overcome. It is not just by an empty bragging of your chest and say, oh yes, I am able to do it. I will fight the enemy. I will be able to... No, 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 no. You have to pray. And if you are lazy in the secret chamber of prayer, you don't, I don't need any prophet to tell me that it will be difficult for you to overcome temptations of the devil. You will not be able to resist that lady. You will not be able to resist that boy. You will not be able to resist that peculiar temptation of besetting sin that is known with you. Because it will be difficult. There will be no grace within your heart to be able to say no and then stand right in the sight of the Almighty when you are prayerless. In Luke chapter 22, verse 46. Luke chapter 22 Verse 46, and he said, and said unto them, Why sleep ye? Rise and pray, lest ye enter into temptation. So, when you begin to dodge your personal prayer life, and you have replaced it with uh, listening to news in the morning, or hurrying up for lectures, no, no, no personal quiet time, no prayer, 
and even when you pray it is half-hearted prayer that doesn't touch anywhere it bounces back from the ceiling back to you because when you are praying your heart is not there it's just a flippant lifeless prayer so there is nothing coming you don't derive inspiration when you pray there is no approval coming from heaven that your prayers are answered because you cannot you do not communicate into the realm of the spirit realm and you don't have a direct interaction with heaven when you are like that there is no way you'll be able to stand and then overcome the enemy and so Jesus told them rise up and pray that he enter not into temptation not only that self-complacency and self-management when you have self-complacency it's an antidote to holiness when you have self-complacency you are always so sure of yourself uh, we are the, um, the leader uh, we, we are, but don't you know that uh, I, uh, the office I am having now I am the, the, the whole rep of this hall I am the, 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 the person in charge of this subgroup so there is nothing so, and then you rely to self-management my friend, that is the very beginning of downfall. There are people greater than you who have been asked down by the devil. And so if you begin to think that there is nothing, then the devil knows that, yes, this person is soon, very soon his history will be written. And he knows that he will soon fall. So self-complacency, that is what made Peter to fall in that same Luke chapter 22, verse 31. Jesus and, his, and the Lord said, Simon, Simon, Behold, Satan has desired to have you, and that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee, that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. Look at his own response. And he said unto him, Lord, I am ready to go with thee, both into prison and to death. That is self-management. When the one is coming from the blood, when the anointed servants of the Lord are speaking and that word hits you directly exposing your spiritual nakedness and warning you but bringing the warning across your way and you huge it, you just wave it aside and feel that Lord, ah, they are not talking to me they are talking to these other people <laughs> my friend, that is self-management That you are not different from Peter that was what Peter did he said, Lord, I am ready to die but did he actually well, he died later but then did he, didn't he fall? Did it, did it, did it weep bitterly when he left the fold and backslid and then denied the Lord Jesus Christ? Look at it, verse 34. And he and said, I tell thee, Peter, the cock shall not crow this day before that thou shalt thrice deny that thou knowest me. When there is self management and self complacency, it is a sure mark of spiritual decay. Not only that, neglect of direct application of the scriptures to one's personal life. That is another way. That is another antidote to holiness. Neglect of direct application of the scriptures to one's personal life. Lifestyle. When you fail to neglect, I mean to apply the scriptures into your life as a believer, well it's just like what the Bible is telling us in James chapter 1 verse 22. James chapter 1 verse 22. The Bible tells us there, but be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any man, any be a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself, and goeth his way, and straightway forgeteth that what manner of man he was. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty, and continue therein, he be not a forgetful hearer, he but a doer of the work. This man shall be blessed in his deeds. That's what the word of God tells us. And so we can see very clearly here that it is the, the, when you, the application, direct application. When you are studying Bible, you are not studying Bible just for studying sake. You imbibe it. How will I imply? How will I imbibe the principles of what I am studying into my own direct life? Not only that, another antidote against holiness is imperceptive influence of the world engineered by clever manipulations of demons in painting good to be bad and bad to be good. That's what the devil does. At the very moment you begin to see the influence of the world and then you begin to have a reconsideration to the cardinal frontline doctrines of the Bible that we are holding the doctrines on holiness the doctrine of separation from sin at the very moment you begin to have a reconsidering the consideration a rethinking 
Of those doctrines of the Bible, it shows very clearly that that individual is shifting. That is an antidote. He will dissolve the holiness in his life, will so be eroded away. Not only that, neglect of the means of grace. Neglect of the means of grace. What are the means of grace? Coming to prayer meetings, coming to fellowship meetings, coming to Bible study. Those are the means of grace. When you begin now to say that, well, uh, I cannot continue, I am tired today, I am tired tomorrow, I am tired next, next, tomorrow, next, next tomorrow, I will not be able to make it this day. And then you are dodging means where you can be developed and then grow as a Christian. No sooner will the oil of grace diminish within you. And then the capacity of the oil that should be enough for you to overcome the devil will be absent. Look at it in Hebrews chapter 10 verse 25. Not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together as the manners of some is, but exhorting one another so much more, so much the more as you see the day approaching. So that you see that so would the once people neglect the means, things that will gear up your spiritual life so that you'll be more serious with God, then their holiness will be eroded away. Not only that, seductive influence of godless nominal church goers or outright backsliders. They also have a way of nullifying holiness in our life. When you are moving now that with somebody who is on discipline, who is not bending to his rebellion, and then the church knows that this influence of this person is going to be dangerous to the entire flock of the Lord. And then they put that individual in discipline. That all the things he's doing, she's doing, going to the uh, messing up with boys, and they cut the information. And then they said it's on discipline. And that is the person you are making your bosom friend. And then that is the person you come together and say, ah, hi about it. What did they would do? What did they say happened? And then what, what, what is happening? And then you are rubbing minds together, my friend. You are, you are moving away from the pathway of righteousness and holiness. Those things have destroyed very many people who have lived before you. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 33. 1 Corinthians 15, 33. The Bible tells us there, Be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. When you communicate, when you interact with people who are unrighteous and ungodly, it is very sure they will have a negative influence on you. So those things, they hinder your progress in righteous living as you journey to heaven. Not only that, misplace priority of life that genders or engineers ambitions on wrong channel. Misplaced priority. You just discover that all the central focus of your entire life is on how to acquire certificates of the world. That doesn't mean, that we do not mean we should not be diligent. As a Christian student, we are diligent. And by his grace, you will pass your exams in Jesus' name. And but then, you should not make that as the all and all priority. That we said koinonia leading is coming. And say, no, 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 I don't have time for koinonia. Uh, this one is supposed to be done. No, 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 I don't have time for that. When you are doing that, you are eroding your holiness. You are having a misplaced priority because you said, I want to miss a first class in this school. Or don't you know that uh, my own department is a department that uh, uh, they, they withdraw people. And then so, I don't want to be withdrawn. Of course, you still need divine assistance. You will not be withdrawn if you depend on him and you trust in him. After all, there are Christians who have passed through the same faculty or department and then they made it. And so why wouldn't you make it? And these are servants of the Lord who are serving the Lord. So why can't you serve God? And then God will also help you to make it. So when you make a misplaced priority, then it erodes holiness. We come to uh, the last point now. The authentic blessings that follow holiness. What are the blessings that follow holiness? It is a natural law of sowing and reaping. If you live a righteous life, you are sure to reap righteousness and holiness. Not only in this world, in the world to come. The righteous will not share in the lot of the wicked. Although affliction sometimes may come upon a righteous man like Job. Yet, the later end of that man will certainly justify that God was, has not abandoned him in any way at the mercy of devils. And so, it is all when you look at it in the summary end of it. 
remaining with the ancient landmarks on holiness pays off. When you live godly in this world, you will have the support of heaven. When you live a godless life, you will not have the support of heaven. In fact, you will have the rejection of heaven. And then ultimately at last, the demons will mock at you. They will laugh at you. And then they will welcome that person into his kingdom. It is uh, among many blessings that follow the believers. Those who actually are following the Lord in righteousness and in holiness. And number one, assurance of true salvation. You cannot have that definite assurance if you are living in sin and you are not holy. You, you said you are converted yesterday, but you know the kind of life you are living. It calls for much to be desired in the sight of the living God. You cannot have the assurance. Assurance will not come. Don't wonder. Every time you hear a powerful message, another call is made. Then you have to come out because you know you are guilty. You cannot have the assurance. When you have a righteous person, we have a clear assurance. It's not a matter of saying, are you saved? No. He doesn't need to look into the archive. He doesn't need to look into the dictionary. There is a repulsive answer that comes from within, spontaneously. Not generated through hypocritical suppression. Feeling that there is that guilt there. And now saying, no, eh, I'm saved now. It's by faith, I'm saved. No, 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 no. There is a, 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 a natural response that come in. Come out from him. That, oh yes, I am born again by the grace of God. And then, you can see to that, the heaven can attest to that. That this person is a born again child of God. And so when you see that, assurance of salvation, clear assurance, that is a wonderful blessing that falls and follows an individual who lives a righteous life. In uh, Romans chapter 8 verse 1, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. So they are living holy. So there is no condemnation because the spirit of God with a crime within them, Abba, Father. In verse 15. And ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. So when there is fear, then that means there is no assurance. That person is not living holy. But ye have received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Not only that, there is a spirit free. Free from fear of the unknown. You know there are some people who are tyrannically being oppressed with fear of the unknown. They are traveling, they are fearful. If you are a righteous man, there will be nothing that you will be afraid of. When there is thundering, they are afraid that the thundering, they said they have heard that thundering is uh, striking in America now, striking in Canada now, striking in somewhere now, striking in other parts of the world. And once the rain is falling, and then they, are, they will be afraid that, ah, maybe this thunder. When you are a righteous man, nothing like that will touch you. Nothing like that will touch you. Let them send the thunder from their kingdom of darkness. And then it comes, it can just come near you and then pass over you. It will never touch you. It can't touch you. When you are living like you don't have any fear. You are not traveling, you are traveling and then on the road and then they say, ah, this driver is on the high speed. Let the, let the driver be on the high speed. If there is any puncture of the tire, because of you, a righteous man in that vehicle, no matter how high the speed of that vehicle is, this car will just come and then park neatly and then you will nothing will happen because you are you are working with the lord it pays to live holy i have had all this experience personally myself and i know that it pays to work with god when you live for god you stand by god there is nothing of the enemy that can touch you the devil will not be able he may try but he will not succeed because you stand on the word of god and you live by him and so you see here, there is a spirit of the fear. The fear of the unknown is removed completely. In 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, and of love, and of a sound mind. Not only that, constant victory over temptation. Do you know that is a blessing? Whenever you overcome the temptation of devils, and then you are granted victory and success, that is a blessing in the sight of the Lord and the, that thing is more than having the rubies the, 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 all the things of the world together look at it in uh, Philippians chapter 4 verse 13 I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me there will always be an inner strength 
for the beholding righteous person who we always overcome the which will make him to overcome the devil and that is a blessing in fact a great blessing indeed not only that divine presence that secures help at the hour of need whenever you call upon god there would be a divine response from heaven that will secure his divine presence in your life and because of the divine presence there will always be a timely answer to your request at any point in time you call upon the name of the Lord in Hebrews chapter 13 verse 5 let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as he had for he had said I will never leave you nor forsake thee so we see very clearly when God's presence God's presence will abide with you as a righteous person as a holy person not only that sure protection against assaults of the enemies in Numbers chapter 23 verse 23 the Bible tells us there there is no enchantment against Jacob neither is there any divination against Israel and so you will say for us it shall be said what has God wrought in Jacob so we see very clearly there that when you are living a righteous life you are sure of divine witches and wizards cannot come and harm you you are sure of divine protections not only that material needs giving as at when due and then this is what the unbelievers the sinners they rush out and then they don't do they seek they, they sing the things of this world they lose out of the kingdom of god but material needs that you may not even be looking for it when you are giving to righteous living jesus promised us that you seek the kingdom of god and his righteousness all other things shall be added unto you in matthew chapter 6 verse 33 but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, the holiness for which we are, we are speaking on this morning. And all these other things of the world shall be added unto you. Is it passing exams? Is it making a breakthrough? Is it getting money? Have you seen the righteous going begging? Not at all. Since I was young and now I'm old, the Bible says, I have never seen the righteous forsaken, nor is seed begging for bread. So don't take of the materialism. What you need? The basic needs. God will always supply you. It's not something that uh, you, 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 the righteous man, of course, will not be looking for, uh, I want to be a millionaire. I want to have an aeroplane. I want to have, no, 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 no. Your mind is set and focused on heaven. And the basic needs that God knows that you need them here on earth, he will provide for you. So, but you are not going to use those things and say, the, the mass brush of those things to spoil your credentials, like Esau, on holiness, just for a morsel of bread. He decided to drift away. And then invariably he had that muscle of bread. He lost righteousness. He lost the kingdom. So but yeah, Jacob who didn't do that. Yeah, he possessed righteousness. He eventually got more than the muscle of bread. So we are not to behave like Esau. Not only that. Finally hope of spending eternity with God. Is only guaranteed. I repeat it. Only guaranteed to those who are holy. Holy whose sins have been washed. They have confessed their sins. They have been forgiven by the blood of Jesus. And they are painstakingly each day, not following the line of least resistance, but following the line of strong resistance, the whole of the pearling gate swinging open. And then you having an entrance into that Beulah land. And then settle down with the angelic host and see other departed spirits of the righteous men see Peter, see James, see all those uh, righteous men and then wander in the street of heaven I'm telling you, it's only granted to those who are holy those who live holy and have a purposeful decision to live righteous and godly and defend that holiness in their life defend it, not only in their own life, defend it even among where they are, it's not that you are righteous and then you see sin going on somewhere and you, you, you keep a seed loop and you cannot talk. You cannot stand for your right. And then you cannot stand for the right of the word of God. On the ground of the basis. On the doctrines of the Bible. Endlessly contending for the faith. That was once delivered for the saints. And then he said that. Well then it doesn't matter. No not at all. If you are righteous. You are holy. And your holiness will make you. Anywhere you go. They must see it in you. In your contour in your outlook, in your behavior, in everything that you do. Because ultimately, that is what God will be looking for on the last day before you can enter heaven. 
for the rapture, of course, that will be the basis for rapture. At death, of course, that's what we'll be looking for. Is this person's sins forgiven? When the sins were forgiven, did he stay, live steadfastly righteous? Was he godly and living and maintaining a holy work with God? Or was there a time in his Christian life that he went away and never came back and now is dead? And then that's what they will examine on the basis of your spiritual state at death. That determines your eternal state in the great beyond. In John chapter 14, as we close, verse 1, Let not your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. Remember, he was not speaking to the Pharisees here. He was speaking to Christians. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. Jesus was not speaking to backsliders here. He was not speaking to people who once had an encounter with Christ. He was not speaking to people who they, they had the word, but they didn't believe. No, he was speaking to his disciples that there is a place prepared for you. And if you want to enter that place, the landmarks of holiness must, must not be removed. Personally, in your own life, in the life of where you are, and in the life of your community, as much as you can, you defend righteousness and holiness, without which no man in any planet of the earth will be able to get to heaven. Rise up and let us pray. Landmarks of holiness. Examine your life. Are you holy? <laughs> Ask yourself the question Should the rapture suddenly take place now? Will you make it? Don't just say, well, no, 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 I will make it now, <laughs> friend. It's not just by your own uh, decision, but by heaven's evaluation. If you say you are okay and heaven says you are not okay, who do we believe? Should we believe you or do we believe heaven? I think I would rather believe heaven. So better reconstruct your life and check your life. Don't just be jumping here and there and feel that you are okay, you are okay when you are not okay. How is your relationship with ladies? How is your relationship with boys in your department? What is your ambition like? Are you lusting? Lusting after worldly things? Lusting after lady? That lady is there and you're already strategizing. Already have to be having secret thoughts. And then you talk and talk away your life. This is the only requirement that God will be looking for in the last day. It's not that well, I have this title. There are many people with title that are in hell. It is not enough to have a title. Get the real experience. 
You can get sanctification even this morning. Holiness, purity of heart. Your heart to be holy without any stain of the Adamic nature. Without any impurity. Without any evil. So that you remain pure. So that when the rapture takes place, you will go. Go at the rapture into the great beyond. Call upon the name of the Lord and pray and pray truth.